We've got a fun challenge. A while ago, I developed this extruder that uses timing belts to push the filament. And it performed quite well in our very scientific test. And it also didn't do too bad in the test Stefan did from CNC Kitchen. But there is a problem. It takes a lot of time to put one of these together. It's almost a day. Besides 3D printing everything, I have to cure it, sand it, clean it. I have to glue in the inserts. I have to mount everything together. And this design isn't optimal, but I will show you that later. This is not going to be just a redesign. We are going to build one out of plywood. Why, you might ask? Not because Xtool sent their Xtool P255 watt CO2 laser cutter. Laser cutting is a lot faster, can still be 3D printed, but we can use different materials like plywood, but also acrylic transparent acrylic or maybe even PCB material and if we can use PCB material we can maybe incorporate some electronics on there like a filament runout sensor or can communication so the extruder itself can control the stepper motor and the heater and if the mist we are getting ahead of ourselves imagine this a sheet of plywood about this size and all the parts are in there you can just pop them out put these parts together and you have your extruder a bit like one of these kits if that's possible you can basically ship an extruder in an envelope that's pretty cool right laser cutting has some interesting challenges first of all every part is two-dimensional yeah that's that's it that's that's the challenge when you set yourself some design restrictions chances are that you will find some interesting insights or interesting results. I already designed the extruder for sheet material, but then I realized that I can just buy one of these kits from Amazon to get some inspiration and to see which design principles they used. So I think it's interesting to first put one of these together. Okay, the first thing I notice is that all parts are labeled and that's the nice thing about laser cutting is that you can also do engraving and the second thing i'm very happy with is to see how small some of these parts are because i thought that i couldn't get that small because of a fire hazard because you put just too much energy on a small place but i see parts here that are even smaller than the ones that i'm going to use in my extruder okay so this is just put in here oh oh wow okay i already with this very first part see a very interesting design concept oh this is this is more useful than i thought it would be hmm. the square tabs are pushed into slotted holes so they stay in place wood is quite forgiving when it comes to this all parts are held in place using these thin tabs while well, non-cut sections basically and can be pushed out i did some measurements and made notes of everything they even added a small piece of sanding paper to remove the tabs, that's good to know. Some pieces required some fiddling and I had to apply some force without breaking them. I put together the rest of this jeep and it was a lot harder than I expected. It also took quite some time, but it was a lot of fun to do. I made a lot of notes and it was a learning experience. But my main takeaway with this is that there is a lot more possible with laser cutting than I initially expected. So this gives me confidence for this project that this might actually work. I already made a design. I've made that a while ago without having a lot of knowledge about laser cutting. There are still some things that I have to modify. I'm used to designing with uh, tolerances so you can see that there is a gap here but when laser cutting there is a curve so there is some width that you cut away so you have to under dimension things another thing i was considering let me just hide one of these things these holes are square as i've shown in the montage all of these holes are basically slotted holes because i want to make this out of not only wood but also out of acrylic and pcb material and especially acrylic isn't forgiving as wood i will just keep it this way and make use of these tabs like this. And to my surprise, there is one part that has these exact tabs. One of the things I am still not happy with, with this design is that these two blue parts, 
still have to be 3D printed. Ideally, all parts are or laser cut or just standard parts off the shelf. After seeing this, I think it should be possible to, well here at the bottom, uh, this is the, the, the adapter mount for mounting a hot end. But I think it should also be possible to build this out of sheet material. And I've also ordered square nuts from Amazon, M3 square nuts. And it looks like it's going to fit in there. So I modified the design with my new insights and it looks like I managed to modify the hot end mount in such way that it's all sheet material. This means that besides the laser cut parts, you'll only need bearings, timing belts, some M3 screws, nuts and a motor, if it works. And that's what we're going to find out. We're here in our 3D printing now slash laser cutting room. Behind me, here is our bad boy. The X-Tool P2, our 55 watt CO2 laser cutter. I have screwed around with laser cutters before. I think that this, this 10 watt laser engraver is a fire start. This is something else. If you're serious about laser cutting, then this thing can cut through 20 millimeters of acrylic and 18 millimeters of black walnut in a single pass. So I don't think it will have problems with cutting through two millimeters thick plywood for our project. x is not a sponsor of this video, but they have sent me their laser cutter for this project, of course, to promote it. And, um, well, I can honestly say that I really needed a laser cutter like that for this project to work. So x thanks a lot for sending this awesome machine. This is thin and light. Now if it works, then also the exterior is going to be quite light, I think. Um, I rearranged all parts next to each other in Fusion and turned that into a sketch that I could import in Illustrator. I selected the parts I wanted to cut and started with these gears and axles. The laser cutter takes a picture of the work area, so it's easy to drag the drawings to the right place. Then I started the process. The parts came out great, but the fit was very loose. I did some measurements and had to modify just one parameter. At this second attempt, the fitment was perfect. I selected more parts to cut out and mounted them together. I got confident and arranged all other parts. I went on until quite late to finish this very first version. This is the very first version and I'm actually pretty happy with it. Everything fits, all parts they move and it can also grab onto a piece of filament and then it comes out of here, out of this square hole and I managed to make this adapter mount for the hot end out of well, only sheet material and these two square nuts. And it grabs onto this filament pretty well. If I try to pull on it, then I'm actually back driving this extruder. Well, let me check on this one. That also back drives. Not as good as that one though. Can already feel that this runs a lot smoother. Main reason why this runs smoother, I think, is because of the design flaw this thing has. The main problem with this design is that these axes, they are only supported here on this base part. And also these tensioners, they are only supported also on this base part. That requires a lot of stiffness from this base part. And this already is very stiff. Even with this stiff resin, it tends to bend these axes and it causes friction losses and you can feel that this doesn't run smooth. So I've redesigned that on this one in such a way that all axes are supported on each on the opposite ends. So that makes this thing a lot stiffer and you can feel that it runs a lot smoother. But this definitely isn't perfect and you can already see it happening over here. This tends to go up so each time I have to push it back, but it already damaged this axle here and it doesn't quite align. Most importantly, the way how this thing is put together, 
is far from ideal. I had to <laughs> apply a, a lot of force on this part here. You can see that I already damaged it here. Well, this belt is tensioned and I had to hold everything in place while pushing this. Um, also, this is getting pulled apart. So I have to redesign it a bit, but I think that we're onto something here. Especially when we make it out of PCB material. Not that this is per definition better. It enables different possibilities where wood is easy to work with and has an interesting aesthetic. Like you can see behind me with the new way of showing the names of our top tier Patreon supporters. And I just introduced the Goldman material on Patreon. Thanks Mitch. PCB material not, not only enables integrated electronics, it might also enable some cooling solutions with the use of copper layers. So, and I think it's quite interesting that, well, you don't often see the exact same product where only the material itself is different to give it vastly different properties. The more I think about it, the more enthusiastic I get about this idea. But it's definitely not easy. The past few days during development, I got stuck a couple of times. Sometimes taking a step back, not forgetting to eat and do a Google search well, it helps. Turns out square axles is kind of a common thing and it seems to be much stronger. I redesigned it again with different axle designs. I made several iterations because it kept breaking and often went on until quite late. I partnered up with PCB Way to take this idea a step further, but before I'm going to send my design, it needs to work. PCB Way is one of the most experienced PCB manufacturers in China. Their service is ideal for prototyping PCBs, which can be shipped fast. They can manufacture high end complex PCBs, flex rigid PCBs, and they can assemble them. It goes further, they offer CNC machining, sheet material fabrication multiple ways of 3D printing and injection molding. Isn't it awesome that you can send your design, select the manufacturing process, select the material you want to use and get a professionally manufactured part back? This is what I want to explore next. First I'm going to show you how I actually put, well I have a bunch of these and I think I have a, a first working version so let's put it together. The success of a product often depends on how it's framed. So instead of this is impossible to assemble, we call it a fun and challenging puzzle. This is far from perfect. And the main issue is that the axles of these large gears, they're too fragile. <laughs> Pieces are just falling out of here. This can be solved with using stronger materials, but I really want to use plywood. So I'm going to increase the thickness of these axles, but that requires larger bearings. And during my search, I also found these bearings that have a flange. That makes assembly a lot easier and also gets rid of this buckle system that weakens these axles even more. And right now is required to keep these bearings into place. I thought that was a smart design, but my question to you is, 
Would you be interested in an extruder like this that's shipped in an envelope, comes with all the parts except for the motor and you can put it together and have your cool looking, interesting, well working, awesome extruder. It will be of course better than this. This is just a proof of concept and before I'm going to ship anything, it must be thoroughly tested. It also must be a lot easier to be put together without the use of tools, maybe some 3D printed ones. I think it would be fun to launch this as my very first physical product. If you're interested, I just launched a newsletter and you can subscribe to it using the link down below. And I will keep you posted on the progress of this thing, when it will be launched or if it would fail, because failure is always an option. If you have any suggestions on what material I can use for an extruder like this, then please let me know could be interesting to, to see how far we can stretch a concept like this.